Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Wina Wong. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Hong Kong's home prices have fallen to a 30-month low, and experts believe the downward trend will continue. Student shot by policemen during a chaotic street protest found guilty of trying to snatch the officer's gun. And Oxfam demands better protection and working conditions for street cleaners. Property prices in Hong Kong have plunged to a 30-month low, returning to levels when the COVID pandemic first hit the city. Experts expect the downward trend to continue, even though there are hopes that high-rolling mainland buyers may return soon. Isaac Lee reports. Prices in the world's most unaffordable property market have fallen for the second month in a row. According to the Rating and Valuation Department's Price Index, homes were 1.65% cheaper in July than the previous month. At 376.1, July's figure is also the lowest since February 2020, when COVID first broke out. Small to medium-sized flats suffered the most, losing more than 2%. But luxury homes were more resilient. Apartments measuring 1,700 square feet or larger even picked up 0.2%, although there were fewer than 20 transactions in this category. Property prices have already fallen 4.5% in the first seven months, after reaching a record high in September last year. Analysts believe the downward trend will continue in the short run, especially with the looming interest rate hike. A Hong Kong University professor also put cold water on the imminent easing of land border restrictions, which could bring back wealthy mainland investors. In the larger size, investors may be benefited from that because there may be some buyers from the mainland who are looking for buying properties in Hong Kong. But I think that the overall effect is actually minimal. But people wishing to wait and see before entering the market may not be better off renting either. The rental market rose for the second consecutive month in July, with an increment of 0.62%. But rents are still slightly cheaper than the same period last year. Exactly HKIBC. Health authorities admitted they can no longer verify every positive RAT report in view of a recent rebound in COVID cases, spot checks will now be conducted instead. One explanation uh, why we do that is uh, because of the low false negative rate so far we have tested. And the second, um, of course, is because of the uh, rapid increase in number of the tests we have to do. So we have to uh, be more efficient in the use of our laboratory testings. Hong Kong added 8,488 infections today, 236 of which were imported. Despite a slight drop from yesterday, Chuang said the figure may not accurately reflect the actual situation, as there had been day-to-day -day fluctuations. On a separate note, the condition was, has worsened for a 17-month-old toddler who was admitted to Princess Margaret Hospital on Saturday after contracting COVID. He is now in critical condition and requires intubation and a mechanical ventilator to assist in breathing. A student who was shot by a policeman on the streets of Sai Wan Ho in 2019 has been convicted of multiple charges. He and another protester were found guilty of trying to snatch the handgun from the officer amid chaotic scenes. Joanna Ho reports. Patrick Chow and Wu Tikin arrived at district court this morning to hear their verdicts. Also in attendance was Cardinal Joseph Zen. Chow, then 21 years old, made international headlines in November 2019 when he was shot by a traffic policeman during an early morning street protest. Along with Wu, now 22, the pair were charged with attempted robbery and obstructing the police officer. Chow also faced an additional count of attempting to escape from lawful custody. They had denied all charges. 
The policeman earlier told the court that he drew his handgun as a warning signal to disperse protesters surrounding him that day. He added Chow and Wu had tried to snatch his revolver and that his life was under threat. As a result, he fired three shots, one of which struck Chow in the abdomen. Chow recovered, but part of his liver and one of his kidneys were removed. In defense, Chow's lawyer argued the student could be trying to push away the gun instead of snatching it. He added the officer was in a state of panic and misjudged Chow's hand movement. District Judge Adriana Che rejected the arguments, saying videos have shown that the defendants intended to snatch the weapon. She agreed that the officer's life was at risk and would lose the ability to protect himself had he lost possession of the gun. Therefore, it was totally reasonable for him to open fire. The judge convicted Chow and Wu on all charges. Their bail was revoked pending sentencing on October 10th. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. Oxfam is calling on the government to improve the environment at the city's refuse collection points so that janitors can take a proper break. It also wants workers to be protected under extreme heat. Maisie Mock reports. While street cleaners have to endure the searing heat whenever on duty, there's little relief even they return to their bases. The average temperature at refuse collection points reached 32.2 degrees last month, according to Oxfam. The group also found that two-thirds of 200 cleaners it surveyed had felt unwell inside the station due to the heat and poor ventilation. Space is always a premium in Hong Kong, and there's no exception for refuse collection points. At this station in Wan Chai, janitors can only take a break and eat next to the bins where rubbish is dumped or loaded onto trucks. Fans were installed to improve ventilation, but they could hardly blow away the pungent smell, especially on hot summer days. This janitor only had one humble wish, add more seats so they could rest comfortably. Installing air conditioners was a dream she dared not have, she added. Authorities are currently in the process of renovating 20 refuse collection points. That makes up nearly 2% of the total stations. Oxfam urged the government to do more, such as giving janitors an air-conditioned area to change, eat and rest. Program director Wang Shek Hong also floated the idea of a heat subsidy for workers under scorching days. While they should also take a break once temperatures exceed a certain threshold. As short-term relief, the group will be giving out 4,000 neck fans to janitors for free to help them stay cool. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Authorities in Shenzhen have shut down the world's largest electronics market after detecting 11 new infections. Hua Chang Bay, which comprises of thousands of stalls selling microchips, mobile phone parts and other electronic components, will suspend business for four days. The closure is expected to cause disruptions to local supply chains. Meanwhile, subway services in Wuhu and Futian districts are also suspended. Cinemas, karaoke parlors and parts are closed, while large-scale public events are scrapped in Futian district until Friday. The mainland as a whole registered about 1,500 COVID infections. According to Taiwanese media, a group of around 10 bipartisan lawmakers is planning a trip to the United States next month. The delegation is reportedly being led by Charles Chen, a member of the Taiwan Parliament's U.S. caucus. There are plans to visit Congress, although it's not clear yet who they will meet there. The trip will last for four days. It comes after U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi landed on the island earlier this month angering China. As the floodwaters slowly recede in Pakistan, authorities can finally survey the extent of the economic damage, 
Over a thousand people have been killed since June, and the military made a rare appeal to the international community for help. I also appeal on behalf of government of Pakistan, on behalf of people of Pakistan, to our expats and our friends abroad to please come forward and help these people who are in very, very difficult situation. Residents in stricken areas are toiling to get their lives back on track after their dwellings were washed away. The devastating floods added to the misery of the people, already experiencing the worst economic crisis in decades. Crops were destroyed, sending prices of basic foodstuff soaring. Asian stocks took a plunge today as hawkish comments by the U.S. Federal Reserve before the weekend sent jitters around the globe. The sell-off was triggered by fears of sharp rate hikes in the United States and Europe. Investors in Asia saw red across the board today. Stock markets in the region were finally able to react after Western economic leaders expressed more aggressive than expected messages at the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium. On Friday, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell dashed hopes of a pivot when he said it's likely more large interest rate hikes will come in the next few months to tame his country's highest inflation in four decades. Although he acknowledged the hawkishness will cause some pain for many, he called that the unfortunate costs of bringing inflation down. There was similar sentiment from the EU. European Central Bank Board member Isabel Schnabel warned central banks across the globe must act forcefully to fight inflation. Locally, the Hang Seng Index closed down 0.73 percent, with top 10 turnover stocks mostly in red. Meituan bucked the trend, however, after the food delivery company beat estimates on Friday. It reported a 16.4 percent rise in quarterly revenue compared with a year ago, although that is still Meituan's slowest quarterly growth in two years. A look at the charts now. The Hang Seng Index closed down 146 points. In top 10 active stocks, Meituan was up $4.80, Tencent down $1.20, Alibaba down $0.65, cents. JD down $3.40, Hong Kong exchange is down $7.60. In foreign exchange rates, the euro is at 7.83, 9.17 to the British pound. And in foreign markets, there was no market today. Renowned banker Vincent Chang has passed away at the age of 74. Chang joined HSBC in 1978, rising to chief economist eight years later. He acted as an advisor to the colonial governor and was later appointed to the executive council in 1995. Cheng went on to become HSBC's first Chinese executive director and Asia-Pacific chairman. The alumnus of Chinese University also served as the school's council chairman for six years until 2015. Chief Executive John Lee expressed sorrow over the passing of Cheng and thanked him for his contributions to the banking industry and charitable causes. Finally, the weather, it will be mainly cloudy with few showers tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 28 and 33 degrees. The bad weather will start to go away on Tuesday, but expect there to still be some showers and thunderstorms. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. And that's our main news for Monday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Winna Wong. Thanks for watching. Good night.